wonderful clients into our businesses. And um, I, I'm a long, long time marketing person and attracting you know, our soul clients, our ideal clients. Somebody asked me what soul client attraction meant. Um, when I talk about soul clients, I mean, our ideal clients, our very favorite clients who we want to be working with. You think of your, 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 your favorite clients and you want more of those, right? You want more of those fun clients, those clients that really, that you guys really sync together. That's what we're really talking about doing here. When I talk about soul client attraction and um, I am super excited about this topic. Marketing is one of my favorite things to talk about. I am a, a lifetime marketer. I have been doing marketing for more years than I would like to admit. I truly have. I mean, it's one of those things that I was a marketing back in the court. I was a marketing in the, the corp corporate world. My degree is in, in international marketing. I, you know, I have been doing marketing for a long time, but I like to do marketing in a different way. And I've thrown out a lot of the old rules of marketing and, and opened up into a different world of, of really looking at how are we engaging and nurturing and building relationships with our clients and, and with the communities that we are in. So that's where we're going to be going. And I've been learning a lot of things in the last several years about, you know, as, as we, we've come through the pandemic, I think people really have, have come into a space of, of, you know, they, they, they get, we get marketed to on, on every single day so much. I mean, we get hit with between 6,000 to 10,000 messages per day. I mean, that's crazy, right? 6,000 to 10,000 messages per day. And so how do we really stand, stand out? And then how do we really find those right ideal clients? That's what we're going to be talking about today. I've learned so much in the last few years of just how, how to shift things up in my own business and how that makes a difference. And um, that's where, where we're going to be diving in. So let's dive in here. Um, I am Cami Gellner. If you don't know me, um, I, I've been doing, um, I've been helping women entrepreneurs for more than a decade. I love helping them really grow their businesses, grow their businesses with more time and more money. And because I like I think that none of us want to be working long, big, long hours. Um, you know, I go back to the corporate days when I worked, you know, 60, 80 hour weeks that does not work for me anymore. And I am very, I'm very good at, at creating boundaries in my business and very good at creating the right systems in my business that helps me have more time prosperity and more wealth prosperity. So we are going to be diving into to marketing today and how you can be really attracting more of your soul clients into your business. And I'm obsessed really with helping women entrepreneurs grow their business. And so that's, that's something that we're going to be diving into today. So imagine having a steady stream of more clients coming into your business, right? More clients, um, more, more connections. Um, this is where we're going to be going. And as we dive in today, I would love to see in the chat, um, let us know where, let us know where you are joining us from. Um, so um, just drop your, in, into the chat, tell us where you're joining from so that we can see who's here. And I um, am diving into um, marketing now, let's dive in. So in working with hundreds of, of women entrepreneurs every single year, I see a lot of things happening and this is what um, some of the things that I see happening. First of all, the, a lot of the women that I work with are really amazing at what they do and yet they aren't getting the leads that they want. Their marketing and their sales and their lead generation might feel challenging and sometimes they're even struggling to articulate their true value. And I'm going to give you some tips on how you can really um, work with this and I think that um, because I believe that if you are so amazing at what you do, right? If you're so amazing at what you do, we need to get your message out in the world and you need to be, there's people looking for you. So that's where we really want to make sure that that happens. The other thing I see happening is people getting lost in all this noise. So I talked about the 6,000 to 10,000 messages that we're getting hit with every single day. So because, because there's so much noise out there, how do we really stand out? So I'm going to be sharing um, my, my things that I work with my clients on to help them get the leads that they're looking for. 
um, help you get the leads that you're looking for and the yeses into your business. So, um, because it can be really frustrating to have your message, not, you know, put your message out there and it's just not reaching people. And the other thing I see happening is people trying a lot of different marketing tactics and they're, you know, they're just trying everything. And when you just start trying everything, it becomes really hectic. And what I'm going to do is really help you start to think about what's that sales system look like in your business so that you, you get consistent and you really start building a consistent state of leads coming into your business and also a, a longer term pipeline, which is a really nice thing to be able to look at your at, at and say, here's the, the pipeline of people coming into my business. So that's where we really would like to get to. And then the, the other thing that I see happening is people working harder than they ever have, right? They're, um, if you can relate to that, um, just drop, drop into the chat that I've been working harder. Um, because if you've been working harder and all the things aren't really giving you the results, what I'm going to be sharing with you today is some ways that you can start to think about, okay, how can I do marketing different? How can I be smarter with it? Um, it can get really heavy when we're, when we're just working harder and harder and we are, you know, we're, we're, we're getting into this place of, you know, hearing so many, this is the way you need to do marketing and, um, you have to do marketing. You, you hear all these different people telling you this. And what I want you to do is tap into some of this inner wisdom of you and feel into what is it that you like to do for marketing? Because we actually have to love what we're doing for marketing. Otherwise, it really comes across in our work. So thinking about the different ways that we can market our business, finding the ways that you love to market and start to look at it through a different lens. And um, so that's where we're going to be looking at this. So, yeah, I see a lot of you here saying, yes, I've worked harder with not the, getting the results that I've been wanting. So that's that's not uncommon. I've heard that. And so. What I am going to be sharing with you today, I really hope will change some of that up for you so that we can get smarter with this. So the big goal is to create a reliable marketing and nurtured sales system. And I'm going to be talking more about what a nurtured sales system looks like um, that generates consistent leads and sales from your sole clients, from your ideal clients. Um, this is really, really where we were wanting to, to get to, right? It's like we're getting to this space of of more yeses into your business. And today I'm going to show you how to attract more sole clients into your business. So let me give you an, um, I'm going to share one of my clients, Jill Coit. Um, she was really, when she came to me a few years back, she was really ready. You know, she was ready to surpass um, her prior six year figure income. And in that first seven months of working together, she really, she, she blew past that number and then up leveled who she was as a, as a, uh, as a leader, as a coach, um, and really started to shift up her business. So this is what we're, this is this, the, the type of work that, um, we did together to really change that up for her. Um, and my goal here today is really to uplift every one of you in this room. Um, I am, you know, I, I love to give back into my community and I am always honored of who's showing up and in my circles and, so for every single one of you, I want you to know that this is space for you to take and pull some, what, what pieces really resonate for you and work this into your business. And um, the other thing is that I want to earn the right to, to continue this journey with you as your, and as your guide and, and as your mentor, if it feels like a fit. So we'll talk about how that can look at the end of our call, but let's dive in. So my work evolves around what I call the three soul and strategy pillars of prosperity. Um, a couple of things here. First of all, you notice soul plus strategy. So I weave together listening to our soulful wisdom, listening to that, you know, our inner guidance inside, listening to that soul, um, you know, what we really want to you know, be listening to our calling and following that. And then the strategy side is putting the strategy alongside of it. So I mix both sides in my work. And I, and I think that's really important for you to, to tap into because I believe the soul side is really where we get the magic. Um, it's like we're, we're being called to, to deliver our work in different ways and to do things differently. Listening to that soul wisdom is really important and then applying the strategies alongside of it. So that's one important part of my work. The three pillars of uh, prosperity, and this is prosperity for both um, time prosperity and wealth prosperity. 
So when I talk about time prosperity, I am talking about the um, the energy of how we are showing up in time. It means that we're we're really honoring how we um, how we move through our days in time prosperity. We're not jumping from meeting to meeting to meeting, but we're actually creating space. So I mean, for example, I went for a walk this morning. I had a, a lovely walk, and so making that kind of space for ourselves so that we can really be grounded in who we are, and then um, wealth prosperity prosperity, of course, is about more clients in your business. And I have three pillars. The first pillar is about vision. Vision is the right packaging, the right pricing. It's the the vision that the impact that we want to make and the vision of the impact that we want to have in our life. What's the right work-life balance? Um, So all of that fits under vision. Um, In voice, we're going to spend a lot of our time today under voice and visibility. So it's like, what are the ways that you're, you're, uh, you're speaking your client's love language? How are you, how are you attracting clients into your business? And then the visibility piece, of course, is how are you being seen, being heard and, and, you know, getting more people to see your messaging. So this is where we're going to focus our, our, our time today mostly is on voice and visibility. Um, because it's about attracting more clients into your business. And as we look at that, we can take those two, we can take voice and visibility one step deeper into how do our clients get to us, right? How are our clients finding us? And what we are going to cover today are these three areas. Um, first, we're going to meet them, meet our, our soul clients where they're at. We're going to get into their customer journey. And we're going to really look at it from that perspective. What's that customer journey? So we're going to do some deep customer journey work. Second, we're going to get into creating messages that matter, that really elevates you as a thought leader in your space and as a leader in your, um, so that people stop and think and act and do differently because of your messaging. So we'll talk about how the, the importance of this, and this is what really opens up doors for you, if you will. It opens up doors into big, to bigger stages, to big rooms, um, to important people. Um, so it really helps you get noticed from that perspective. And then we're going to get into building what I call the no love and trust, um, so we, we've often heard no like and trust. I love build building no love and trust because building no love and trust means that we really have created a deep relationship with our clients. So, um, you know, how do we get to more yeses? So that's where we're going. Um, your client, your client's journey to you. So first of all, we are going to meet our customers where they are at. And this is the customer journey part of this, right? This is, this is where, you know, if you've been feeling frustrated that your message isn't reaching enough people, if you've tried all the marketing tactics and they haven't worked, or if you've been trying to piece them together from, you know, hearing this, this expert said, use this. And this expert said that I'm going to give you a way that you can start to bring these together. And, um, what I call speaking your client's love language, because you're tapped into who they are. And when we tap into who our ideal clients are, we, 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 we start to build a brand that's really impossible to ignore. And it's really crazy not to buy from because people are like, oh my gosh, I need what you have. And that's what you want is having people say, I need what you have. Um, yeah, Kathy says the struggle is real and exhausting. So if we can start to shift this up and, and really say, okay, how do we do this? So people are, are really attracted to us. They're drawn to us, energetically drawn to us. Like they're, yes, you are the right person for me. Um, we get into the other piece of this is once we really deeply understand our customer's journey, we can double and triple the value of our, the lifetime value of our, our clients. And this is because we are intimately connected to where they are going. And, and, you know, it's like they need this right now, but next they're going to need this because you've gotten deep into their journey. And that can really help your clients be with you for a long time. And I think that's a really important piece of this. Um, And then the third thing is we can simplify how you market with, um, with a content strategy that keeps your soul clients coming to you. So because if we do our deep customer journey work, we know what's going on in our our clients' minds and our sto- in their stories that they're in. So we know what we can we we always know what, some place that we can go in our in our content that helps you speak to your ideal clients. Now I have heard people say that 
um, you know, diving into who's your, your, your ideal client, who's your sole client, um, you know, what, what is it that they desire? What is it, you know, what are their challenges and their problems? Some people have said that that can be elementary work. And I am going to challenge that all day long because it's next level marketing when you get deep into a, a customer journey, because you are, you just, you, you know, their next move. And it's, it's so much more powerful to just really get into that, um, get into what is it that they need next? Where are they at? What's, what are the stories that's keeping them awake at night? So when you think about what your ideal clients, um, what's, what's the stories that your ideal client is having right now? So bring in a person into mind that is one of your ideal clients. So, you know, just jot down their name. And as you jot down their name, think about what's keeping them awake at night. Um, what, you know, as you're getting into the minds and the hearts of this ideal client and what is, what is their biggest desires, desire? And what is it, what are the emotions that that's keeping them stuck where they're at? Um, what false beliefs do they have about their own abilities? How are they struggling? How can you help them through this, this place that they're at right now? What is your, your superpower that's going to help them get from here to there? Um, that's really where we start to get into, you know, if we start exploring this, we get into their, we get into their story, we get into the, the desired transformation that they want and then how you serve them. And then you get to the yes to you. And when you do that, then you can start to build your offerings to fit that journey. You might have to tweak your offerings to fit that journey because you're meeting them where they're at. You're building your marketing and your content to serve that journey. So you're speaking to them based on what you know about them and you're building your sales conversations to serve this journey. And that's a really important piece of this. Um, so often it's like, you know, it's like you want to keep your sales conversations coming back to what are the stories that they're in right now and how are you helping them solve that? So these are some questions and you might even take a screenshot of this, this slide, because this is one that you may want to come back back to and really dive, you know, spend an hour journaling on these questions. If you start, you know, looking at what do they care about right now? What are the roadblocks they're up against? What's keeping them awake at night? Um, what do they need to know that they don't even know? I mean, they, are they even problem aware? Do they know that there's a problem that they're, that they're up against that, you know, they have, they, they aren't even seeing that, right? Um, what can't they see that they that they'll see after working with you? What are the false beliefs? Do they believe that that's going to work for that person, but not for me? Um, what do they need to believe in order to say yes to working with you? And then what are the conversations they're having right now? So these are these are questions. Do this work. This is a foundation of your content strategy that will serve you for a long time. If you actually spend the time doing this, you'll be able to come back to these your, your responses. You'll be able to have all types of social media responses. You can do, um, one of my clients was saying, I, I'm going to create a, a newsletter for my clients this week. And she says, what should I write about? And I'm like, go back to what you talked about here. These are all of the things that your ideal clients are wanting, you know, that, that, that are in their mind. So you're really meeting them where, where they're at. So as you do that, then you can even say, okay, one step further, what's the most expensive problem that you solve? Because that's really important. If you know that most expensive problem that you solve, you can declare it, you can own that space and you can really, you know, you can showcase how you can solve those problems. And the, another big question you can say is what's the desired transformation that you help your clients with? That's what's that, that breakthrough. And the results I help my clients with are, so you're looking for what's the outcome, what's the results of working with you. So if you have all of these different pieces compiled, what you will start to do is you have content that you can come back to. You can write up, you can write do a podcast on it. You can do a blog on it. You can do a live stream on it. It all becomes fodder for you to be able to just reach your soul clients because you've done that deep work. So that's really, really important. This is one of my clients, clients Kathleen June, and she is um, she she really does a lot of adult education. Um, she helps people build their online courses, and 
what she really realized as she dug deeper into her customer journey was that she could serve her clients in deeper ways. And this allowed her to not only um, increase her rates because she knew the value of her work, um, but she also enjoyed a surge of repeat clients because um, they, she knew what they were going to need next. So she could serve them in that way. And this ultimately tripled her income. So really powerful statement here and what the, the value of really going deep into your customer journey and what that can do for you. So that is customer journey. And I'm going to take a sip of water. Okay, now we are going to go, get into the second section of this. And that's creating messages that matter. And this is about, you know, so what we've been talking about up to date has been very in tune with your client. I mean, this has been um, in tune with, you know, meeting your client where they're at. And then when I, what I know about the women that I work with is all of my clients have this desire to make a difference with their work. Um, so many of them left the corporate world behind or they, you know, left something else behind and they're like, I'm doing this because I want to make a difference. So as for, for you on the chat, uh, in the chat box, drop into what's the difference that you want to make? Um, you know, just shout out a couple, couple of words that you want to make a difference with your work. Let's just see a few of those. How are you going to be, how are you being called to make a difference? Right. I know, um, so Jana's making people's dreams come true for their homes. Brain health and wellness is, is Neely. Um, Kathy McCarty, I know, is out to do, um, you know, some amazing work to make sure that people aren't getting meth toxins put into their homes. Um, Jana's really helping people rebuild after a disaster. Um, she, Pauline is helping change makers get their messages out in the world so they create change and difference they dream of. So you guys have these big, desires to make an impact. And I think that's really important. And I think that's what I love is, is women coming to me that have this desire to make an impact. So Angie is wanting to empower women to, to, to come home to themselves and overcome imposter syndrome. So important, right? So that you really reclaim the health, happiness, and vitality. All of you do are, are doing amazing work. And what we want to do is ignite that leader in you. Um, and as, as you, as you do that, what we want to do is, is help you become the go-to leader in your space. And I want you to stand out with your, your original. And I say your, it's, it's gotta be your original thought. Um, it's someone, it's like, it's not somebody else's thought. It's your original thought and your leadership that gets people to stop and think and act and do differently. And, um, and it also, you become a sought after expert to speak, to podcast guest, and more. So for example, I can tell you, that in the last month I have been on five stages and I wasn't out promoting myself to be on stages. Um, as you guys will hear later on, the, my, my core top of funnel is not getting on stages, but I had five people reach out to me to be on stages. And I said yes to all of them because I, I like that. Um, and, but it's because I, people, you build a reputation, you build a brand as somebody that, you know, they want you on your stage and that's what you would really like. So whether it's it being podcast guesting or whatever that looks like, you want people inviting you into their spaces. So this is where we start to create messages that really matter. So I want you to think about if the whole world could hear one message from you, what would that be? And this is getting into like, we're getting into, you know, we've been down in the, the customer journey, but it's like, we're getting into higher level um, messaging in, in the hierarchy of it all, right? It's like bigger picture thinking. And I'm gonna give you some examples of here in just a moment. Um, so what is it that you want to stand for? And if the whole world could hear, if, if you had one thing to say to the whole world, um, what would that be? So it's like starting to think up, right? So if we think of Brene Brown, we know she stands for courage, right? You can choose courage or you can choose comfort. You can't have them both. So she's asking you to, you know, choose which way you want to go here. And she's asking you to choose courage. You know that. So she, she's she's asking you to go there. Another one of my favorites is, is Gabby Bernstein. Um, she says, I let go of the need to control and allowed the universe to do her thing. So I love her book, The Universe Has Your Back. Um, you know, and it's, it's like, so she, we know what she stands for. Um, Malala, right. Girls should learn history 
and also make it. So this is really, she's about empowering women in it with education. We know what she stands for. My own message, uh, one message for the world is women's wisdom is the medicine our earth needs. And I do believe that we are changing the way business is run. I believe that we are changing the way um, the world works and we need more women in high places. So I am a big, you know, I'm a big proponent of, you know, let's get women's voices out there in big ways. One of my clients, Dana Kirchmar, and I'm going to give you several of my clients here and I'll share you some examples. This is a, one of my favorites because this is really, really good. It's like, what if we stopped asking girls if they're good at math, instead started asking what problems do they want to solve? And, you know, several things about this one that I love is we're getting people, we're, we're, we're telling people to stop doing something. We're, we're saying this is, you know, stop asking. This is something we've been asking girls for way too long. How do we change this conversation? Let's change it. So she's, you know, putting a stake in the ground for what she wants to stand for. Um, Shelly Shell, uh, when women invest in companies they believe in, our world will change. So we, she believes that we have the power to, you know, look where we're making investments, look at where we're, where, what, what products we're buying off of a shelf and know if they're companies that we really support. And, um, you know, so Shelly is actually my financial advisor. So we have, we've made shifts in my portfolio because I don't want to invest in certain, in certain things. And I make those choices. So again, this is getting us to act and do differently. Ah, this is a great one. Antone Thompson, midlife isn't a crisis. So we always hear about the midlife crisis, right? So it's not a crisis. It's an opportunity for profound momentum and impact. Really, really powerful. I love this. And my another client, Vivica von Rosen, um, women's world, women's words change the world. So she's all about raising up women's voices and get, getting them seen in her because she believes that their voice, their words are going to change the world. So really powerful. So how do we look at a one message for the world? Let's let's see what it is and what it's not. Let's look at this. So if you have a one message for the world, first of all, it's your opinion. It's, it's, it's not somebody else's opinion. It's really, it's your, your message. It's your original thought. It's like, you've gone away and you've thought about, this is really important to me. And if I go back to any of those, those women that I, you know, that I just shared with you, they didn't just come up with, you know, here's my, my um, tagline or my positioning statement, because that's not what this is. This is not a tagline or a positioning statement. What it is, is it's, it's a statement that you might even drop into a, you know, a conversation and you're saying, this is what I believe with all my heart. I, I am putting a stake in the ground. Um, it's memorable. It's repeatable. It gets people to stop. It gets them to do something, to think differently. It gets them to want to go deeper into the conversation with you. If, if you're on a podcast interview and, and you, you drop that statement, they're going to say, I want to know more. Please tell me more about that. So any one of those ones that I just showed you will help do that. Um, what it's not it's not, as I said, it's not a positioning or a tagline. It's not a quote from somebody else. It's not an inspirational saying or a comment statement Statement like um, find your purpose and live your life. That's, it's too benign, right? That's, there's nothing that's meaty about that. You want people to stop. You want them to go, oh, that's interesting. So this is a different level of, of marketing. When you start to position yourself as, as, as an expert, around a topic, it can really um, change this up for you. So this is something I want you to come back to again as well. You know, how are you making a difference? What is it that you want to stand for? And if you had one thing to say to the whole world, what would that be? Um, so that's, you know, if you start working on that, and, and give yourself time. I can promise you every single one of those women that I just showed, including my own, took time. You know, you have to ponder in that. You have to be in that. And sometimes it, it works to be in community to, to, to really work through that and get to that message for yourself um, because it can be really a, a great way to go deeper into that. So what do you do with that, right? So you, you, you land this great message. What do you do with it? Well, this is starts to build out your whole a foundation of your content strategy. So, you know, we've talked about, you know, looking at the content from your, your customer journey that you, that, that we looked at earlier. Now we're starting to get into what do we do with this one message for the world? 
right? So we, we, we come up with this one message for the world. And from that, we start to say, okay, what is it around this topic? Do I want what do I want people to know about this topic? So it starts to give you a framework. So you start to think about that. So, um, you know, so for example, um, for me, the women's wisdom is the medicine the earth needs. The pillars that I love to talk about um, are not surprising, voice, vision, visibility. Um, it, we start to get into, um, you know, our factor. So there's, there's, there's pieces that I have content. And from that content, I can, I can develop, um, podcast one sheets. I can develop, um, um, I can develop talks. I can develop talks like this and teachings like this. I can deliver this content and I can deliver content into my mastermind communities. So it becomes a consistent way that we stay on, on point for our messaging. And when we, when we do full content strategy, you know, we go much deeper than what I'm showing you here, but it gives you a framework that you can come back to time and time again. And, you know, if you get um, pulled in for say a television interview, I mean, um, Dana was um, one that got pulled into a, a television interview. And when she dropped the message, that's when she said, you know, what if we stopped asking girls if they're good at math? And we started changing up the conversation and saying, what, what, what do you want to change? The reporter, the, the, the television reporter was like, wait a minute stop there. Let's go deeper into that. And that becomes a, you know, a platform for somebody to say, let's go deeper into this conversation with you, but you are guiding the conversation. And I think that's a really important part. And, and, and I want to pause and just even say where this communication message box, the one message for the world came from. When I was back in the corporate world, I ran a, um, a I was a VP of marketing and branding. So I you know, in a large multinational organization, we had thought leaders from around the world. Um, and one of my favorite programs that I got to develop was what I, what we call the expert source program. And this is a body of work that this, this whole thought leadership is a um, part here is as a body of work that I got to develop with Ogilvy PR back, you know, almost gosh, almost 17 years ago that we got to do that. Um, and it was a body of work that we took about 150 people through as experts in our organization. And, you know, so that's where we start to say, okay, um, you know, building out expertise and we were putting them on financial times, the wall street journal and all the, the television channels, our experts were going out with their messaging. So I love to be able to bring this into you guys as, as something that's really powerful because it positions you as a leader in ways that a lot of other people aren't doing. You know, that a lot of people, you see a lot of people repeating a lot of stuff that's not even theirs. And so this is a way to really develop yours in a way that that, that makes it unique and, and, and specifically coming from you and it builds your brand as, as you as a leader. So um, I'm just gonna pause, Jana, you just posted something here. Knowing what you need to decide before you start your renovation or new build means you are prepared and there will be few or no surprises. Yeah, I think that's an interesting one you could really work with. I think that, you know, and you might want to get it like tighter and, and but I think that be, given, you know, that you work with somebody whose home burned down, for example, um, you know, it's like you want them to to do things up front um, that, you know, they may not think of. So I think you're, I think you're onto something. I think you could definitely work with that. Okay, so, I've given you a couple of different ways that, you know, we start to build our messaging out from a content creation perspective um, that draws, you know, that really builds your brand, it, you know, builds your expertise and also, you know, starts to build um, how you bring clients in. One of the things I did not cover today is, is building our brand from the inside out. And that is, I think, really important, I think. And I'm not going to spend time on this today because I, I want to focus on the client attraction part of this. But it's important from the perspective of building your brand from the inside out. The essence of who you are is an important part of, of helping you stand out from all the others because there's no one just like you, right? There's just, there's not somebody just like you. So if you really build your brand from the essence of you into the essence of your brand, um, you create something that is, is uniquely, uniquely special to you. 
Um, customer journey is the second part of this. So we're really learning to speak our clients love language. And then the third level of this is your one message for the world. So when you really build out what I call your, um, your, your, um, what do I call this? Your soul client attraction message matrix, right? That's with a lot of words. <laughs> I should maybe shorten that up a little bit, but it's, it's, um, but when we build this, this becomes really important for us to be able to create more time prosperity in our businesses along with the wealth prosperity, because our messaging becomes very consistent. Um, we can have team members that can take our no that understands what our core messages are and can work with us. And that really means, for example, you know, I podcast every week. Um, Jessica, who's here on my here here with us today as, as my my support team today, um, she takes my podcast and she knows which pieces to pull from it because she understands my messaging, right? And she can and we can repurpose that that content. Um, so once you build this out, it really helps you become a more scalable business. And it also helps you be consistent in your messaging. So people really understand what it is that you stand for. One more thing that I think is really worth pointing out here is that as, as, as women, we have this advantage when we start to bring our messaging, our words out into the world, um, we might have some some limiting beliefs that show up early on. It's like, who am I to own this, right? And you know, a lot of you may have already worked past this point, but we we can still have that. If you do, you know, like we're working with shedding that out, shedding those limiting beliefs, we start to lose that, and we start to really find our our confidence. So we start we start with shedding the beliefs. We move into you know finding our confidence, and we start to get walk in our strength and our power, and you know delivering our message and sharing our message messaging, but sometimes you can still be project projecting our, our content, like projecting, you know, what it is that, um, we stand for. And there's another level. And I think this is where I call this our female advantage that where we really start to embody our message and embody our leadership. So when it, you know what it is that you stand for, that it's like, I am putting a stake in the ground on this and I am walking on this because I believe this with all of my heart. You become this beacon of light, right? You become this beacon of light that people are drawn to you. And that's so powerful. And that's where you really start to become a movement maker, right? This is where you become a movement maker. And I do believe that as women, we have this, this power to really embody our messaging because we are passionate about what we stand for. And when, we're, when we wanna make an impact with our work, we, am, we can embody our messaging in a really beautiful way. So this is something I love to bring to the forefront because I think that, you know, so many of my, the people in my communities want to make a difference with their work, that this is the, the, the way we get there is we, we have messaging that we just believe full heartedly in our, our body and our soul, that this is why we're here. This is our calling that we're meant to make in, in the world. So let me go back to Dana here, because when she went through this and defined what she wants to stand for in her industry, um, you know, she actually talks about, um, um, you know, there's only like less than 3% of women in the aerospace and aviation world at leadership roles. And she wants to change that, right? She has started speaking around the world with this message and it's opening up C-suite doors. It's it's resulting in more clients for her. She's getting on big stages. Um, she's getting on boards. I mean, she's really able to make, create a bigger impact with her work because she has this core, you know, she knows what she stands for. She knows what she's trying to make, what difference she wants to make. And she also understands that customer journey. She's also built her brand from the inside out. So all of these pieces together really help her step into a, you know, a really powerful role, role as a leader in an industry that has, you know, not necessarily lifted women up. And she's got men saying to her, how can I help you? Right. I mean, that's the beautiful thing. And that's the real change that happens when, when you find that clarity in your, in your thought leadership messaging. Okay. So we're going to go into the third section now and we'll take a sip and we'll go next. Jana, I love this. 
um, dream big and get real so that you can reach as far as possible, right? It's like definitely think big in your industries, think big in how you're you're you're, you're delivering, and that's what really shifts that up. So we're going to start talking about how do you build a nurtured sales system. And this is where we get into this um, building no love and trust to get more yeses into your business. And so powerful when we start to do this. And what we, what we are able to do when we do this is we create a repeatable, scalable marketing system that attracts more of your ideal clients into your business. And we're building not only a marketing system, but a sales system that brings in sales now but also to, helps you build a pipeline into the future. And this is, uh, there's some things that I have implemented in my own business that I'm going to be sharing with you here in this section that I think will help you think through what are the ways you want to be marketing your business and what's a way that you can create a consistent system that that helps you, um, you know, keep having more conversations and, and, and it's very much nurtured conversations. I, mean, I, I think, you know, you guys will probably, if you've been in any of my, my social medias, you, you probably have heard from me because I'm actually making a very, um, you know, I'm making a big attempt to make bigger, deeper connections with people on social media. It's like, what an amazing community we have. Um, so, um, in ways that we can engage with each other, right? So that's been something that I've been doing. So, but you, you get to develop what yours looks like. Um, the other thing, this starts to simplify and streamline your marketing because we develop repeatable assets. So, um, you know, there's things that, well, I won't even go into that, but because I'm going to get into it deeper, but, um, we, we, if we have repeatable assets, it simplifies how we, we show up. Right. And it all goes back to this core messaging that we've just talked about, right. These core pieces of messaging that really, that you've developed around your business carries right into this section here. So one thing that I want to talk about is embracing a nurturing sales system isn't just about boosting your numbers. It's a commitment to nurturing a business that grows with ease and profound impact on the clients you serve, right? So this puts you out having more conversations with your ideal clients who are looking for you because you solve their biggest challenges, their most expensive problems, right? So this is, um, this is a win-win thing. This is a really win-win thing. If you can develop a system that you keep showing up and supporting your community. So I know all of you have seen marketing funnels before, and I like to look at marketing funnels through a different lens. And I call them, as I've already mentioned to you, the, the, the no love and trust marketing funnel. And I'm going to start at the bottom of this marketing funnel because so often people start at the very top. And I actually like to start down here at the bottom of a marketing funnel, because guess what? You already have community that ha that knows, loves, and trusts you. So you'll notice here, it's no love and trust. You're building in, the, in this funnel. Um, but you have this community of people that already know, love, and trust you. And um, then at the middle, you've got the love part where you can really... Um, you can create more, more love by these people here getting to experience your, your magic, your goodness, um, you know, creating educational pieces, just like I'm delivering this, this free educational piece for you. This is part of that, right? It's like, this is a way that I can deliver back to my communities and let them experience what my work is, what my teachings are. Um, and so it's like building that. So and we're going to go through kind of these, these three levels here in just a moment. And then at the top of this, at the top of the funnel here, we've got awareness um, where we're really building more awareness. Um, and it's really, you're tapping into other people's audiences. And I think that's the, the, the big differentiator there. So what I do is, as I mentioned here, is we start with nurturing the existing community who already loves you. They already know, love, and trust you. So let's look at this. The bottom of the funnel is all about engaging the communities that already know, love, and trust you. And there's all kinds of ways you can do that. And I want you to think about your community right now. I mean, you could be, you might send regular emails. You might, um, you know, get into direct messaging conversations. Um, you might have communities that you have built that you can engage with. Like I have my Extraordinary Women Connect group on Facebook. So we engage, you know, every day of the week. 
um, on, on weekdays, we are engaging, we're having, we're creating conversations and opportunities to connect with people. Um, we can host events. Um, those of you who know me, I host my, my um, Ignite conference every year. It will be my 10th annual Ignite conference. Um, we're hosting an Extraordinary Women Connect live event next week in Denver. Um, you know, so events could be a way that you engage with community. Um, you can create referral programs. So your clients who already know, love, and trust you can say, let me, let me introduce you to somebody. Um, you can have sales conversations, um, sales calls and conversations that, that, you know, help people, you know, more deeply in the work that, you know, you're doing, you're giving them, you're giving value back to them. So all of these are ways that you can engage with your communities. And when you think about the community that's there and you don't want to do all of them, I want you to really remember this. You don't want to do all these things because that will make you crazy. <laughs> you just don't, you want to really find a way that it's like, what are the couple ways that I, <clears throat> that I'm going to really deliver value back to my customers and create community and connection. You don't have to do all of them, pick a few. So that's that part of it. <clears throat> middle of funnel. Um, middle of funnel is all about, um, um, is starting to bring education. So it's bringing your teachings to the forefront. And this is actually the area that I see so many people not really stepping into. Um, there's so many ways that, you know, people need to see a little bit about who you are and what you do. So you can live stream, you can do webinars, just like this is, you can do workshops, you can do retreats. It's like, you're bringing your teachings into the mix of this. And in fact, if you have a podcast, you can deliver your teachings across the podcast. Um, so that's an area, you know, this is all the ways that you can be, um, delivering your, your, your messages to your world. And so how will you be sharing your teachings and are you sharing your teachings on a, in a frequent basis so that you've got people at the bottom of your funnel, you know, love and who already know, love and trust you. Are you, are you nurturing them? Are you having, giving them more value so that they can, um, you know, get to experience your true magic. And then top of the funnel is, is, is about really tuning into other people's audiences and you're turning up your lead generation, right? So this is where you've got people, you know, and you can turn up your lead generation also, at, you know, by just nurturing and working with the people already in your communities. But this starts to bring in more people into your communities, oh, making a bigger pot for you, right? So one of the ways I've been doing this a lot and well, the way I've been doing it in 2024 is with roundtables. So you guys, if, you, if you've been to any of my roundtables, you know that every other month I'm running a roundtable with some really amazing experts bringing their expertise. And we have these great conversations and we co-promote it. We, um, we all are promoting it together. Um, you know, summits are another way that you can do this. You know, there's, you know, over the years you've seen people running, you know, summits with like 20 or 30 people on them and everybody's co-promoting it. Roundtables are, I find a, a really simple, easy way to do it because you're just having conversation with great people. So that's one way that I'm really tuning into, um, you know, turning up my lead generation. Um, speaking, getting on stages is another way. And it's a great way to, you know, somebody hosting an event, they invite you to be a speaker, you go in. Um, that's a great way. You've got guest podcasting, you've got um, affiliate partnerships. Um, you can get into the even the higher level of advertising or or guest publishing for for you know a, a magazine like Forbes or something like that. All of this starts to open up your message to a broader group of people. So that's top of funnel marketing. And you know, as you think about it, now I want you to look at each one of these areas. So at the you know at the bottom, where would you like to focus? And, I, and you'll not, notice what I said here is I said, what marketing approach will you take for each sector? Doesn't mean that you put 10 things in one, 10 things in two and 10 things in three. What's a marketing approach that you really want to get good at and focus at, focus on in this year and, and you know, look where there's opportunities to, to, to enhance that, right? So you're looking at it, you know, maybe I will really enhance my referral program this this year that could be at one area that you look at maybe you come up here and you say okay to the educational level you know maybe i'm going to start showing up more often in my way and i would encourage you all to be showing up more often in your in your teachings because this is where people get to experience your mark your, your magic and then up here it's like 
what's one thing that you could do? Do you want to be on more stages? Do you um, choose, okay, I'm going to put my focus on getting on more stages right now, or I want to guest podcast, pick one, do it well, and, you know, invest in that and build on that. Um, so that's, um, I think a really important way to look at that. Once you start to do this, once you start to get all of this working together, what you'll find is that um, whether people are coming in here at the top on the awareness on other pe from other people's audiences, or there are people that already know, love, and trust you, if you're working this educational piece in the middle, you people can come in from that edge, you know, from the upper part, or people can come in from the bottom part, but they're getting more of your value. Um, people that know, love, and trust you are going to start telling other people come join, you know, the, the different programs that you've got, um, you know, people that got to experience you someplace else want to get more. I know there's people on this call right now that have seen me speak in the last month. So, you know, that's where the, the, the power of this can, um, you know, you're, you're creating an ecosystem, if you will, of community. And as you look across yours, where are the breakthrough opportunities in your marketing is it you see breakthroughs um you know that you could do on the bottom part of your your marketing funnel you see breakthroughs in the middle part do you see breakthroughs on the um on the top part you know just just be just notice where you have the opportunity to really change this up and here's a couple of things um as you look at that middle of funnel marketing and i want to focus specifically on that um Jen, I'll come back to that question in just a second. Um, as you look at, you know, simplifying the middle of your funnel marketing, um, a couple of things that you could do is, um, and what the way we look at it is we're doing what, we are doing um, what I call a conversion event. So um, that's what, you know, something that's falling in that educational piece. It's like inviting them deeper into your programming, into your, you know, that you can invite them into your products. Um, we are targeting, um, we are actually doing one every, every other month. So um, we're doing a, a conversion a month, every other month. Um, so you, you can kind of figure out what your cadence is for that. And the other thing is you, you get, a, you can repeat topics over the years. So once you have developed your content in a really great, if you work through that content strategy, you can say, these are my core teachings. Um, and, and for example, I'm going to be, um, it's like, well, so you have these core teachings and you can space them out over the year and you can deliver them in different, you know, different ways because um, you've, you've, you've developed that base of content. You don't have to recreate the, the will every single time. It's like, here's the core teaching. And then we go deeper core teaching We go deeper. I mean, there's just different ways that you can do that, but you're not having to create, um, once you get the, the assets built, um, like for example, this talk will be an asset that I have that I get to use in the, into the future. This is the first time I've delivered this talk, this specific talk, um, like, like it is today, but I will deliver it again. I definitely will deliver it again, um, at some point in the future. Um, so they become assets that we can repeat and, and leverage. I, I did another talk earlier this year that was um, simplify to magnify, to, to amp, what was it? Simplify to, to amplify, I think. Um, and um, it was about how do we scale our businesses? That one I will, I will re-deliver at another point, right? So what, we develop these assets that we can reuse over, to, over time. And what's really important, and I haven't mentioned this as of yet, but we want to get to the place where we are always, we know what offer we want because we, we, we know what our ideal clients need. We know what our soul clients need. We are sending them to a same place always. So we start to build that cell system um, that we, you know, we're like, for example, I invite people into my mastermind communities. That's where I want people to go. And so I want you to know where is it that you want clients to go and what I see happening is people having having too many products, and then they start sending people in all these different places, and they really lose track. Your your prospect lose track of what it is that you do because you do too many different things. And I've been there, I've done that, and we're going to talk a little bit more of that before we we totally wrap up today. But you're sending your your um you're sending people from your events to a very specific high value product that that you offer. Um, that delivers a lot of value to that client. 
And because if you have too many different promotions, it really dilutes your marketing over the year. And I think I hit all of those. Oh, you repurpose the marketing assets you create too. I think that's an important one is like, you know, you do a podcast um, um, episode, you know, you guest podcast somewhere that becomes content you can you use on your social media. There's like, you can take clips out of it and do, you know, social posts. You can, you know, it becomes ways that you, you repurpose your marketing asset. You always want to be repurposing your, the, the marketing assets that you build because you, it takes a lot of effort to do that. So do less marketing things, be very focused where you spend your marketing and then repurpose those assets. So um, Jana, you had a question about um, a referral program. How do we know what to offer? You know, it's really about um, when you look at referral programs, you know, look at the value that they're bringing to you and, you know, and you do high-end projects, right? You're doing, you know, full blown house, house remodels or rebuilds, if you will, um, not just remodels, rebuilds because people have lost their homes. So I would look for, um, one, I would look for strategic partners for you. Like what, what kind of strategic partners could you have? Um, which you probably have strategic partners, I'm guessing. Um, and I would look for, um, I would develop something that, you know, what's of real value to that person. So for example, um, if it's the, the general contractor, then, um, you know, how can you collaborate and, and partner and, and what kind of a, a, a give back to each other can you do? Um, I think it, it's, it's so, it's so unique to every person. It's hard to be specific here, but, um, happy to chat further with you on that one. Um, just brainstorm with you. Okay. So this is what we've been doing this year. Um, and if you've watched my marketing at all this year, and I actually am in love with how we've changed this up this year. Um, we do um, a round, round table with other people's audiences one month. And I bring in three outside experts. We co-promote um, it together. Um, so it's other people are getting, um, you know, they're, they've got people that they are people with big mailing lists and we are working together and we're saying, um, let's all promote this. And, um, you know, they're getting exposure to my audiences. And then we, we go into, um, the next month I will do a teaching and then the next month I'll do a round table next month I'll do a teaching. So we've hit this cadence and this rhythm, which has been really lovely. Um, because one, we're building the processes to how do we run these, um, you know, how does my team really, how do we come together on this and create this process um, that it's repeatable, right? And we've got teachings that are going to be repeatable over time. Um, we've got um, the roundtable processes. What are the things that the assets that we have to create to promote that, um, to, to provide to the other people? I mean, we have all these processes. So this starts to build a cell system. And what it does for me is... Um, it starts to put more people in my pot of prospects, my product, my, my community, right? So I have more people that I can have conversations with. And um, that's really important, right? Is the more conversations I can have, the more people that I can invite into my community. Um, I have um, what I call these conversion events. So the like webinars, that sort of thing, but the learning pieces are conversion events. My Ignite conference is a, is a conversion event. Um, and, and I haven't really talked about that, but this is, you know, another part of this. Um, and then I get to enhance the conversations and the relationships I have with the people. So if somebody comes to my event, I want to know what was your biggest takeaway? You guys will all get messages from me today. What was your biggest takeaway? Because I want to know. And I want to know what resonated with you. What, you know, so I want to, I want to build a relationship um, and we, we do that. And, uh, and I spend a lot of time and a lot of focus every single day doing that. And I think that's why this last piece is really important. It's the accountability. What commitment do you make to yourself when you are, when you're setting up a system like this and it doesn't take me long every day. I mean, I can spend, I can spend 10, 15 minutes and have some really amazing conversations and, and build some relationships on, on, a, on any given day. Um, but it's, I commit to my making these these um, the these outreaches these connections on us every single day. I am making commitments to that. How how much 
time and space am I making my giving myself to do that? And I do it because I can tell you what I was doing a year ago was I'd get people coming in and wanting to connect with me. I mean, having a podcast, I think I get a lot of people coming in just because I have a podcast. Um, I also like to believe that I teach some really cool things. And so I get people coming in for that as well. And so I get a lot of people coming into my social channels, you know, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, particularly um, a little bit of Instagram, but you know, those, th those, the first two are, are my biggest ones. And I get every single day, I probably have, you know, on well, any given week, I probably have 30 new connections coming in. And I was just, you know, I look at them and I would accept them. And then I'd go away and I'd forget about it. And what I really developed for myself as a way to stay in connection with the people who are coming in to get to actually know who's coming into my community so that I have ways to stay connected, right? Because otherwise, um, you know, it's like, if you don't take it that next step, you know, down the pipeline, not that, not even down the pipeline, down the relationship, if I don't take it down that next step down the relationship, it doesn't really, um, it doesn't service. I mean, who just having a bunch of people on your, your, your connections doesn't work, right? Having relationships works. So that's what you're, you're starting to do. So that's why I call it a nurturing cell system. And by, you know, being consistent every month of, of, you know, doing this sort of thing where we're nurturing our, you know, how people are coming into our communities and then staying in connection with them and building relationships, that's where it really starts to, to, to change things. And that's where it starts to build not only new clients coming in my door, but it's also the, um, it's, it, it builds the, the pipeline for the future because your people will say, you know, right now it's not the right time, but you know what, three months from now, I am going to be ready for this. So it builds the pipeline. So, um, and it builds community and it builds tr no love and trust, right? It's because you're building true com community. Um, Don, I love this, right? Relationships work. Exactly. I love it. Okay. And here's one last piece of this that, so you start to bring these things in. So what are the things you're going to cut or eliminate that's going to give you time to spend on this important function in your business? And that's really important because if we want to build businesses with time prosperity in them, we want to make sure we're not doing all the things. So there's so often we can look at all the things we're doing and we're like, is this really delivering what I want to do? Um, you know, just between us here on this, this circle. So next week I'm doing my Extraordinary Women Connect event, which is an evening gala event that I've done for 10 years. Um, last year, I, I in prior years, I always did it three times a year. Last year, I took it down to one time a year because I was asking myself, do I need to do this? I'm about 99% sure that tomorrow night is going to be my last connect event. Now, my my big ignite conference, my three-day conference, that's that's a staple in my business that will be there forever. But you know, so much of my community is not always here. I always have had a Denver, a Colorado community. Um, but my community, I look across this board, we we're all over the place, right? Um, so my community is is much more virtual than it was originally. So this is probably that's probably an event that, you know, at one evening event that was probably going to go away next year because um, it was my, it was my 10th annual this year. And I was like, I needed to host my 10th annual was, that was a big deal, but um, I don't think I'll probably do that next year because I'm working on a different system, right? I'm working on a different way to nurture and build relationships. So we can, and I think that's the longer we get into our businesses, the more we can, um, the longer we are in our businesses, there's things that we have just kind of historically done that we can start to let go. You know, I let go of my wild women writing retreat a few years back because it was one of those things that we, that, you know, just wasn't, it wasn't core to what my customers needed right now. So I think that's really the piece of it. A few final notes on um, a nurturing sales system. And I've talked about repeatable assets. Um, but it's like really building these tools that keeps people coming in to have conversations about your high value offer. And I'll, and I'll touch base on a high value offer here in just a second. Um, what are your conversion events? How, what's that, what's that cadence that you're going to create for yourself? Build a natural upsell to the next level. So once you are working with cu customers in a given point, is there another next level? So for example, I have my core soul plus strategy mastermind program, and then I have 
the program for women who have hit six figures and above. That's the growth scale and impact mastermind. It was the next level because I could see my clients going down this journey. I was, I, I was in touch with that. Um, and then too many products dilutes your marketing effort. So that's like sending them to the same place always. That's what you really want to build. And then one last piece on this section is, you know, when you're building conversion events and you're building that, that educational piece of your, your, your pipeline, um, remember visibility is the fire in your growth. The more you're getting visible, the more you're bringing you and your expertise and your wisdom and your magic out, that's where the fire happens. So that middle section of your, your funnel is so, so powerful because you know, it's like both sides of that funnel feed into it, right? And so that's where you're really getting to, to, to make that work. This is um, Shelly Johnson, I'm a client. I am playing bigger and my revenue has grown by 220%. I have deeper clarity in my customer journey, enabling me to fine tune my messaging and brand and better serve them with high value executive coaching and recruiting services. And she's taking on big stages and landing clients while doing so. So all of this starts to fit and work together as, as you, as you build this out. Um, Don, this is so good. Sometimes remembering to do this for my own business, it gets pushed aside. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> what do we need to cut and eliminate? That's so true. Okay. So each strategy here that I've just shown you is is really powerful but the magic really happens when you bring all three together right you're working with the the customer journey work you're bringing the thought leadership the the one message for the world and then you're really building that sales that nurturing sales system um that you know builds the no love and trust with with your the people in your community and there's one more thing that you need to have so and i would be this is really important because and it's it and if you go back to my three original pillars, remember we had vision, voice, and visibility. You've got to have a business model that's aligned to who you are um, because you don't want to go out and start um, really um, marketing yourself and putting yourself out there unless you have the right business model set up for yourself. It means the right packaging, the right pricing, the right business model. Um, this is how you start to simplify how you scale your business so that you have more time and more dollars in your business. It's how you design a life and business you love, and it's how you lead with impact and mission. So I'm gonna share a couple of things here because this is so important. And I see people not necessarily having the right packaging and pricing in place um, when they go out and then they don't really know where to bring people in. Like they go out and they get visible, but they don't know what's the right, they haven't done the math around what's the right business model, um, what's what's the pricing on my products. Um, so it's really important that you have this leg of, of your business, this pillar of your business solid as you're doing this. And you know, you I talk, I've talked a little bit about having um having a lot of products in my business at one point where I was like, I, because I kept adding things into it. I was like, oh, this is fun. This will be fun to do. This will be fun. And so suddenly my business looked like this and you can create growth that way, right? You can, you can, um, you can actually create growth by just adding a lot more products, but what starts to happen is it starts to feel heavy. And oftentimes, um, um, it often happens very organically and you get more zeros, um, you get more zeros and more headaches. So it's more complex, right? Um, but if you scale, you're really starting to, to design to leverage your time, the right team, the right mindset, and you're you're creating this, this pathway for your clients. You're meeting your clients where they're at, and you're giving them a, a very succinct um, suite of products for them to, to work with you on. So building a smart business model for, model for scale starts with um, simplifying the number of products you have understanding your market, really, you know, being deep into that, that customer journey that we've talked about. It means having a high value ascending product that you're, you know, it's like they come in here and they can, they can continue to work with you. Right. So there's, you, you know, that high value that you're delivering. Um, you're not selling them $200 products. You're sin, 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 you're solving big problems for them. Um, it's repeatable assets. We've talked a lot about that. And then this is where we get into the time prosperity of, of, you know, really being able to say, I'm focused on serving my clients in this way. That's where that really starts to happen. And you do this by, you know, really having the vision, the voice and the visibility all come together. And when I 
when I look at how um, these three pillars are so important to really making a business work, one of the things that I know is that oftentimes it's just a small tweak, right? It's like, maybe let's look at the, let's look at the packaging and pricing. Does that need to tweak? Let's look at the, um, you know, the way you're doing your marketing. Does that need to tweak? Let's look how you're getting visible. Does that need to tweak? If you, if we look at that, I'm, I'm pretty good at being able to quickly go through and look at these three pillars and be able to say, is there a way that you want to shift up your business? So what I see often happen happening with people is that they, you know, they build their business and they get to a plateau and they just stay there. And it's, this is where the tweak can really happen, right? It's like, what, what do we need to tweak? Um, and I've done this and this happened in my business. This is why I know this. And I've worked with, you know, so many women over the years that, um, you know, it really has, it's, it's the shift is that we start to say, let's start, you know, creating this change where, you know, we're just growing your business 30% per year. Um, we are, we're considering the lifetime value of, of your revenue lifts. And we're, when I look at that, when I, and then, you know, I have worked with business coaches for a long time. When I look at what this, what that, the, these tweaks have done for my business is, you know, this has created a, a raise up effect. Like my revenue, you know, my business has grown alongside of that. And, you know, when I look at what this, you know, if I would have just stayed flat or versus the big growth that, you know, that, that has happened over the years, this uplift effect is over a million dollars in my business. So it's really, you know, a good way to look at that. So the vision is to have a steady flow of slow clients coming into your business. Let's break this down. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. I like to do the math. When you think about, you know, where you, what, what you want to create for your business and you're, you're wanting to attract more clients into your business, most of the businesses that I work with don't need thousands of clients coming through their door every year. In fact, they need just a few clients coming through their, their door on a month to month basis. So let's just do the math and look at it from this perspective. So you have a high value offer product and you want to generate $100,000 off that product. Um Figure out how many high value offers you need to sell to make that amount. So say if you have a $5,000 offer and it's, um, you know, you need to make 20 sales per year to, get, to hit that hundred thousand. Um, from that, you know, how many of those um, high values offers do you need to sell per month? On this example, it's 20 sales per year. So two sales per month. So it's, it's really doable, right? It's like, if you're thinking about your marketing generating two sales per month, that becomes really doable. If you have a, a nurturing sales system, building that no love and trust and putting community and bringing people together in late in relationship, that's just two people that you're bringing into your business on, on a, a month to month basis. So, you know, this is, you know, think about what is it you need to be doing in your business that starts to bring in those next five sales into your business um, it's like, what can you do? What can you change? What can you shift? Are there more educational pieces that you might be delivering on a regular basis that starts to help you think that through? So, you know, you do that with making sure that you have these, these pillars in place. Let's look at another example, because I think this is a good way to look at it. Again, we're looking at that high value offer. So you want to generate $300,000 off of that high value offer. How many of those do you need to sell to make that amount? Well, on this example, if you have a $15,000 product, your offer 20 sales, again, 20 sales per year again, which that takes you to 300. So I often like to look at this from, you wanna sell these high value offers, right? I mean, that's kind of an important piece of this. Um, you know, you can do it either side. You can do it either way. I mean, you can have a $100,000 product or, you know, you start looking at it through the perspective of, Okay, 20 sales per year again, two sales per month. And this one's generating at, at, you know, that's, this is giving you more time prosperity and wealth prosperity. So just another way to start thinking about it. So vision, voice, visibility. Um, and I'm not going to talk about R factor because that's, that's just, it's really basically how we resonate is how we show up, but it's, it's an important piece of all of this. That's the, the, the soul plus strategy pillars of, of, of prosperity. So one of the things I, you know, every, every single one of you on this call is unique and you've got your own unique superpowers. And when I work with, with, with women, I really help them, you know, 
find the gifts of who they are and bring those out. They had different desires, different um, ways that they want to grow, different um, life priorities. You know, I like to look at all of that. So every person is, is truly, truly unique. And what I do know is I have proven tools and frameworks that really helps my client. I have a powerful community. I have a badass community that that you know that can really support you, and you are unique. So every journey and every one of my clients is unique in, in, in how how I get to work with them. So I think that's really important. I'm not just delivering. I'm not just dropping in a um, you know a system and saying you have to work with this system. But what I, I will say is like let's look at the things that you like to do as a marketer. And let's find the ways that, you know, brings you joy. Um, you know, so when I think of like, for me, round tables brings me joy. I want to do more round tables. It brings me great joy. Podcasting brings me joy. I'm going to do, keep doing podcasting. So what are the things that bring you joy in your marketing and, and pick and choose from, you know, the different, the different categories and, and build your marketing strategy out that way. So let's just recap where we've gone. So you've learned that speaking your client's love language will attract more soul clients into your business because they get what you do. You, they, they, they know that you resonate. They're like, they're like, oh my gosh, she gets what I do. Um, so really speaking that you learn that raising up your thought leadership presence and your messaging will really open up more doors for you and, and really position you as a leader in your field. And you learn how to build a nurturing sales system with a no love and trust marketing approach which is going to generate more soul clients into your business. So that's the, you know, the soul plus strategy pillars of time and wealth, prosperity, vision, voice, and visibility. And then you add community into the mix of it, right? So that's the power of what you get to add into this is you get to invite community into, into your world. And as you build your business through this, you don't need four programs. Um, in fact, I don't want you to have to go out and buy all these different pieces. And I, and I see this happening all the time. People are like, on they belong to communities where they're like getting a training from somebody different every single month and then they start to build this toolkit of things that don't fit together and it doesn't work right because it's 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 you're just hearing so many mixed messages and i think for me i have been a long term investor in my own coaching programs for example i just i re-upped with my my business coach for the third year just a month ago because there's this continuity that helps us really, you know, keep building each step of the way. And what I know is you can try to go figure this out on your own, but what happens is people try to, um, you know, they get caught into, there's pieces that get missed. And I think that's my superpower is being able to really help entrepreneurs see what, how these pieces fit together and where the missing cogs are, if you will. So I would like to invite you to my Soul Plus Strategy Mastermind community. It is um, a, an amazing community and I'll, and I'll touch, I, I'm not gonna go into all the details of it. If you want to learn more about my mastermind communities, I am gonna, I've opened up my calendar this afternoon and tomorrow um, for some prosperity audits. So this is where we would look at these three pillars and, and start to say, okay, which is the way you know, what are the pieces that are, are set for you? Are there ones that we need to tweak? And then what are the actions you need to take off of that? So I actually do a written report off of the, this. It's 15 minutes that we spend together and then I do a written report off of it. Um, so um, Jessica's dropped in the, um, the, the link of where you can sign up for one of those. And um, the mastermind, I'll just share a few things with you. This is, um, when you think about a soul plus strategy approach to your business, um, I get to intimately know your business, right? Um, I, we journey, we're not just apl applying the latest strategy, a hot thing to do. I actually bring real business strategy aligned to who you are. And we work with this, you know, the inner wisdom is part of the, the, your inner wisdom is part of that team. So it's not just me saying, this is what you should do. It's like your inner wisdom is part of that team. And we tailor your pathway to growth. Um, it's, it's really growth defined by your desires and life defined by your desires. So you're, you're creating what type of a business that you really love. Um, second, it's about amplifying your voice and your visibility, voice and visibility, um, elevating your brand's voice in your marketplace and helping you articulate your vision and your, your value more powerfully and really connecting to those, those soul clients. Um, be, and you really become known as that go-to brand in your space. And then 
third, we have, you know, there's strategic marketing insights sites. So it's like, I'm bringing really top of, um, some of the most innovative marketing because I've got, I've got good teachers around me as well. And it's like, it's like, I am, I'm a lifetime marketer, but I'm always learning. And it's like, what are the best strategies that are going to work in your business to really increase your revenue and looking at your business model, right? It's like, how do you make this business, your business scalable so that it really gives you the time prosperity and the wealth prosperity that you desire. Um, it's aligned to the life that you want to create. It's aligned to the goals that you want to create the impact that you want to make. So it's, it's, it's a mixture of all sorts of things, but it's, you know, really looking at your business from that perspective. And then it's, it's joining a community of thought partners in, in a mastermind community that are really up leveling their businesses. We meet three times a month in trainings. We've got, um, you know, we choose a program that's right for you, whether you're in your, you know, ready to hit your first six figures, or you've crossed that threshold and you're really re ready to scale to the next level. We've got different programs and you become just an intimate community member of women who are out to make a difference and do good things with, with their work. So, and then last, you have me as your guide and mentor, right? You get to help have me help you do the work that you want um, to be putting out into the world. And um, that's um, super powerful. So each pillar is worth its entire investment on its own. So we can look at each one of those and we can really see ROI happening for any one of those but it really happens when you put it all together, right? Um, Nicole, Strick, N Nicole Trick Steinbach was a client. Um, not only did I move into the world as a more powerful and positive force, I surpassed six figures in revenue in my first year of business. I broke free from an externally defined persona and stepped into my internal authentic me, um, me for my business. And my business needed to be sustainable and rewarding. And I built this and more women um, helping more women in tech grow around the globe, step into their brave. So, um, yeah. Um, and then, um, another client, Cynthia Farrell, um, she grew her business by over a hundred thousand. I think one of the, th it's a great story. She actually was putting together a proposal. She's a consultant. She was putting together a proposal and I'm like, you are so not charging enough. And in that one tweak, she basically paid for her, her, um, her, investment in me um in my vip coaching and mastermind program just by that one tweak we and, and the client didn't bat an eye so that's one thing that i often am like okay let's make sure that you're being charged you charge what you're worth so um if it's your time let's let's have a conversation there is my my link again the prosperity audit you can um, jump on a call with me this afternoon or tomorrow and we can you know make some we can make some magic together and that's that. Um, a couple of just final words for you guys. Um, you were you were born to create impact, and that your message matters. I am. I believe women's voices matter. I believe that um, you know I am on a mission to raise up a million women's voice, vision, and, and visibility, and help them grow their businesses. And um, this is your message matters. It needs. It's we are being called to step up in bigger ways in the world. So I think a, a, a core value of mine. Um, second value of mine is your soul work is as important as your strategy work. So I've talked a lot of strategy today, but I so honor the soul work that you're doing. And it's, it's really important part of the mix of this. And I bring a lot of soul work into the mix of my programs. Um, changing how your business is done. Um, it's really with time prosperity and wealth prosperity. This is us stepping into, um, doing business differently. This is, I, I believe that we are, we're creating a different paradigm for business as women. Um, we're not willing to work the way we once worked. We are um, wanting to fit life in around us. So we have different we have different approaches to business. And I think that's really exciting. And your business is ready. You are ready. It's your time. Let's, let's make this magic together. Um, there's a prosper, prosperity audit again. Um, my next event is um, one of my round tables, one of the infamous round tables that I have talked about. Um, it's going to be June 12th. Um, we have a, an amazing lineup that is going to be joining me. And we're going to be talking about embracing the energetic shift that we're in and how do we create breakthrough results in times of change. So it's going to be an amazing panel. Um, there's the link for that. Jessica's just dropped that in. Um, and um, then with that, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much for joining me. And um, 
Um, I can't wait. I'll, I'll be in your DMs this afternoon to, to hear what your biggest takeaways were. So um, thanks for, for joining me and we will see you all soon. Thanks so much, guys.